Here's some of the surprising symptoms of a B12 deficiency that you may be suffering from. Hey Wellness Warrior, I'm Dr. Zorowski and B12 deficiency is a problem that you may be suffering from. So we're gonna help you identify that in this video. We'll talk about why you get a deficiency, the symptoms of course, that you will be facing if you have a deficiency, and then the sources as to how you get B12 back to a sufficient level in your body. Let's go ahead and dive into our symptoms first. Now, some of the first symptoms we wanna watch out for are going to be symptoms like weakness, tiredness, and also getting a little bit lightheaded. Now you may be asking, why does this happen? Well, this happens because if you have a B12 deficiency, it affects the blood cells. And when the blood cells actually can't mature appropriately and then carry oxygen throughout the body, this is the result of that happening. So that is why a B12 deficiency causes so many different symptoms, from neurological symptoms in your body, even to affecting your energy levels. Now, the other thing that is really interesting about B12 is that it can even impair your DNA, right? At a core root level of bodily function, your DNA can be affected. So this is why B12 is going to be so important for your health. Now, here's something that's really interesting about B12. When you start to get a deficiency, it impacts your oral health in a big way. So a couple things that will happen is that first of all, your tongue will be swollen. The next thing will happen is you'll start to get cracks in your tongue. You can even get a lot of like painful irritation in your tongue as well. From there, you can get cracking in the corners of your mouth and even bleeding gums, okay? So it affects your oral health in a big way. And then if that's not it, it causes dry mouth. So it gives you this feeling like you just need to drink something like, and no matter how much water you drink, you're not really satiated. You see that with diabetics a lot where they get that feeling of like, they just need to drink more and drink more. Well, this is that feeling that you get. So it impacts your oral health in a big way. Now you may be asking why in the world does somebody actually get a B12 deficiency? Well, first of all, it's malabsorption. So if you have a gastrointestinal issue that you're suffering from, then this is a good reason why. Now, the other reason is because as you age, you start to have the decreased ability to absorb B12. You need something called intrinsic factor, which actually declines in your body as you age. It's a protein that's made by the parietal cells in your gut, and essentially, without it, you can't absorb B12 properly. So malabsorption's a big one. So aging and gut issues is the typical major causes there. Now, if you're suffering from a medical condition, or even if you're taking medication, there's a lot of medications that cause B12 deficiency. For instance, a very common one is going to be the diabetic uh, medication called metformin that can cause a B12 deficiency. And then also poor diet. So if you're following a vegan diet, if you're following a vegetarian diet, this is obviously a big way that you're gonna put yourself into a B12 deficiency, but also, if you just have a poor diet in general. Now, the next symptom is pins and needles in your hands and feet, which is a big source of irritation, but you'll know that you have it if you do. And then it's gonna affect your brain health. It can cause mood disorders like depression or even cause a lack of concentration. So we wanna make sure that if you're feeling either of those, on top of many of these other symptoms, that we're starting to think B12 deficiency, and this is something that's important to realize is that a lot of these different symptoms I'm talking about, they obviously could fall into a lot of categories of a lot of different conditions but the reality is if you just keep hitting every one of these, then there is a good chance that you have a B12 deficiency. Now, B12 deficiency can cause headaches, muscle cramping, and also even impaired balance. And this is something that's interesting because as a clinician, I work with a lot of elderly people. One of the things that happens is that as you age, you start to lose your balance a little bit. Well, one of the things that happens too as you age is you find yourself in a position where you can't absorb B12 as efficiently. So a lot of elderly need B12, a lot of elderly are suffering from balance issues. So let's talk about how you get B12 back in your system. First on our list here is going to be liver and kidney, okay? Now, if you're not a liver and kidney type of person from animals and you're not into eating organ meats, then you can go to the seafood and that's gonna be clams and sardines are gonna be your next greatest source, okay? And I'm kind of just going from highest to smallest amount here. Now, if you're not someone who's liking organ meats or seafood, you're stuck with beef, okay? And if you're consuming meat products, beef, steak, that kind of thing, it is a very sufficient way to get B12 for most people, okay? So beef is great. And then eggs is not the greatest source, but it's a source of B12. And then of course, if you're suffering with a lot of these symptoms, personally me as a clinician and working with people and also having you know a, a lot of 
people I help transform their life, I'd go right to supplementation. Like I wouldn't mess around with the food. Now, of course, making sure that you're eating a proper diet is very important moving forward for the long term. But in the short term, in order to get yourself to where you need to be, I'd go for the supplementation. Now, there's three kind of mainstream ways that you could get B12 in outside of food. One is going to be, you could actually go and buy like a capsule. It's got like a powder in it. You take it. The problem with that is that if you actually have the inability to absorb it properly, or if you are suffering from a gut condition, there's a good chance that you're not going to absorb it. So that's not a really good way to get B12 is from a capsule. Now, the next way is you could, and this is a little bit better, is you could actually go and get an injection of B12, right? I remember back in my college days, a lot of kids would go and get an injection of B12 simply because it helped with stress and it helped give them a lot more energy. Okay. But the most efficient way for myself and you to actually get more B12, if you want to supplement at a higher dose with it, is to get a tablet and you take these B12 tablets and you put them under your tongue and suck on them as if they're like some sort of candy, right? And then you just let it dissolve in your mouth. And because of the mucous membranes and the blood flow under the tongue, it gets right into the bloodstream and it works really efficiently. I'll tell you an interesting story. Clinically, I was working with somebody one time and they had all these different symptoms going on, the cracked tongue, the, the swollen tongue, all of that. And we started uh, supplementing with B12 using the tablets under the tongue. The next day they told me, oh my gosh, I woke up and the first thing I noticed, I was like, my tongue is smaller. And so, you know, that's that swollen tongue. It's called glycitis. And so taking proper supplementation to get your levels up is a great way to just get you there, get the results and then fix your diet. Okay. You know, supplementation isn't a long-term approach. It's a short-term approach to get you answers. I'll put um, uh, some information in the description to the tablets that I use personally. So this is the condition of B12 deficiency, the symptoms you have to watch out for. I'm Dr. Zorowski. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll like this one over here next.